Hi there, welcome along to another video on the channel. It's good to have you with us again, especially my brand new members. I now have a members area on the channel and you too can join, check it out. But first and foremost, I want to welcome to the channel my very first three members. I am delighted to welcome Marcello Bassi and Pradeep Alawat and Albano Bernardo to the channel as members. It's so good to have you on board and I'm very excited to get to know you much, much better. And I hope you enjoy your memberships and the perks that you've signed up for. Um, so, also to everyone else watching the video, a welcome and don't forget to uh, like the video if you enjoy the content. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell so you can miss the video. Uh, that's the housekeeping out of the way. So on today's video, we are going to be talking all about Microsoft Purview, one of my favorite topics, and specifically sensitivity labels. I'm gonna share with you some of my top five tips for using and deploying sensitivity labels. It's coming right up, so let's get to it and check it out. Number five, keep the number of labels to a minimum. In Microsoft Purview, remember not to have too many labels. Too many labels will confuse your users. Keep it simple, have them well named with good descriptions. And remember that label order matters, especially if users are trying to change labels and they have to uh, put in a justification to change the label to a lower permission setting. It's important to uh, not have too many labels, especially in instances where you don't have the licensing that will enable you to have automatic labeling in your tenants. So keep it simple, make it easy for your users to use these labels and understand them. Number four, require your users to apply a label to their emails and documents. Now this can be done in label policies in Microsoft Purview. So this is a good idea to do if you don't have automatic labeling. So if you're uh, an E3 customer and you can only do manual label, this is kind of a great workaround methodology in order to get labels sort of applied automatically. And I'll show you how. If we go through this policy, which I'm editing here, we can select this setting here to require users to apply a label to their emails and documents so that when they're working on emails uh, or documents that are stored in OneDrive or SharePoint or Teams, as long as they're in that location, then they will be required to apply labels before they can save documents or send emails. Only if these items don't already have a label attached. So that's a really great way to get content labeled if you don't have the ability to auto apply labels. Cool stuff. Number three, apply a default label to content. Now this is something that can also be done from within your label policies in Microsoft Purview. I'm editing the same policy as I did in the last tip and we can apply a default label to documents, emails, meetings, sites and groups, Power BI, et cetera, et cetera. You can click the drop down and choose a label that you want to apply. Again, this is a great way to have content automatically labeled with a default label and you can select different labels for different needs. So you could apply the general label to documents. You can choose same as document for the emails or you can choose a, a different one for, for that and so on and so on. And you can, in the case of emails, inherit the label from attachments. So if label is applied to an email, then an attachment with a higher priority label is added to an email. This setting replaces the existing label with the label from the attachment. Fantastic stuff indeed. A great way to get labels automatically applied to content such as emails and documents, etc. Number two, set expiration settings. When you're creating a new sensitivity label, you will notice that there are some settings for when access to the content expires. So if you want to limit how long users can access content with a particular label applied, you can specify a date or a number of days at which access should expire. More info on this. So after this time, users won't be able to open files with this label applied. However, for emails, expiration isn't always enforced due to 
caching mechanisms used by some email clients. If you specify a date, it's effective midnight in your current time zone. If you specify a number of days, the time starts when the label is applied to the content. So this is a very, very powerful setting. So use this. Uh, I always caution to never say never. So uh, always have user access to content expires in situations uh, especially where it's external people who may not need permanent access to this content. So think carefully about when you might need to apply that one. Also use the allow offline access option as well. So with this, if you specify that labeled content is never available offline or that it's available offline only for a number of days, when that threshold is reached, users must be re-authenticated and their access is logged. When this happens, if their credentials are not cached, users are prompted to sign into Microsoft 365 before they can open the document or email. So this is a really good one to have in play especially if you think of the possibility of users in an organization who may be using their own device. They have their OneDrive for Business synced to that device and they leave the organization. How do you enforce that uh, that access is removed? This is a good way of uh, setting that so they will have to re-authenticate after a period of time and you can ensure that your business information is not accessible to them. Number one, be very careful when using the assign permissions now or let users decide option. In my opinion, always use the assign permissions now option. If you let users assign permissions when they apply the label, they are gonna get the choice in terms of what permissions are applied when the label is selected. So if that one is selected in Outlook, you can enforce one of the restrictions of do not forward or encrypt only. And in Word, PowerPoint and Excel, you can prompt the users to specify permissions. So I would say, don't trust your users with this. It's enough of a burden for them that they have to choose to uh, apply sensitivity labels, especially if they're doing it manually and it's not auto applied against sensitive information types. So I always say, use assigned permissions now, you decide as an administrator, take the burden away from the users but be aware that that option is there when you're creating your sensitivity labels. And there you go, my top five tips for sensitivity labels. Uh, I'm sure I could do another five quite easily and uh, watch out for another video of uh, another five coming probably a little way down the line. Uh, really cool stuff. I love sensitivity labels. So many great ways to apply them in an organization using Microsoft 365. They're getting better all the time and these little hints uh, certainly helped me in advising customers on, on their journey for deploying them in their organization. Um, amazing. So thanks for watching the video. Thank you for all of your likes and your subscribes and for hitting that notifications bell. If you've not already hit subscribe, please hit it right now. Uh, if you'd like to join the channel and become a member, you are more than welcome. There are three levels of membership. There's hopefully something for everyone there. You get lots of perks by joining, uh, like, uh, members only videos and uh, uh, one to ones with me if you join as a principal consultant member. So lots of options for you to choose. Um, I hope you consider joining and becoming part of members club. So that's it for another video. Um, please uh, leave your comments about uh, sensitivity labels. Let me know your experience. Reach out to me on Twitter at M365 rising and uh, always good to hear from you. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.